Hey everybody, I came across this scene from The Office, and I think it shows a lot of what we talk about here when it comes to art, and why I personally think it's important. I haven't seen the whole episode, and I haven't seen much of The Office, but obviously it's a really good show. And in this scene, Pam, who works there and likes to draw in her spare time, is showing her work at an amateur art exhibition. And no one shows up but her boss, Michael, played by Steve Carell. Now, first, Jenna Fisher does a really good job in this scene. And she's representing a lot of feelings that I think people go through that we don't often talk about. And a lot of it is pretty subtle and about mixed emotions. Feeling silly about being there, how much she cares about what Michael thinks of her art, the different parts about how she reacts to him, and so on. I think this would be a great clip for acting students to watch and break down. But anyway, a lot of people think art is silly. And you can't really blame them because in a lot of cases you see ridiculous things like people spending $100,000 on a banana tape to a wall. But that's not all of the art world. There are a lot of people who like to draw or do other artistic things in their spare time. And that's one of the important things about this scene. Because it's a private thing, but it actually is genuinely important to people. And that's kind of the underlying thing that drives this scene. No one wants to see Pam's art except Michael. And of course, while he's looking at it, you can see what's playing out on her face and how important it is to her. And there's actually more to that moment. But that's enough for its own video. For now, let's look also at what Michael himself says while he's taking in the painting and forming his thoughts about it. That is our building. And we sell paper. It may seem like a normal thing, but think about what he's actually doing here. He's making emotional connections to the image he's seeing. He's not just thinking about the image itself, which really is just a building. He's deciding how that building connects to his own life, what that image says about his own life, and the world. And we do that a lot when we look at paintings. What does the piece mean to you now that you brought it to Antiques Roadshow? It's become way more special. But we don't really think about it, even though that has a huge significance to how art works. Of course, Michael decides to buy the painting of their building, but it really goes into detail here. As he's building up the value of the painting in his mind, taking it in, it shows you more about the connection he's making. That image represents who he is, who their whole office is, what their whole place in the world is. And more than that, it's a sign of self-validation. It confirms that they have a valid role in the world, and they like being who they are. And it's a poignant moment. But the thing Michael's doing here, that really we all do when we actually take a liking to a work of art, is also very meaningful. It shows perfectly, at least to me, that we judge all these things in a three-dimensional way that really is at odds with the way we usually study them which is by looking only at the image and the paints used and things like that. We will talk about the artists and the history of the painting and that other stuff, but we treat those as side things that we're just talking about because they're interesting. But they're really not side things. When we're discussing those things, we're discussing the painting itself and what makes it valuable as art. I mean, taken by itself, Pam's painting is just a building. What made it worthwhile is what Michael decided it meant to him. And once we realize that, a whole lot of other things in the world make sense that we can never really understand until we do. Discussing the history of a work of art, the artist, the significance of it, is discussing the art itself. Not just what the artist intended, but whatever became attached to it. We have to view it that way. It's the only way we can truly know our own feelings and know what makes a work of art successful. Now, of course, after that, him appreciating Pam's work, giving her that bit of validation herself as an artist, brings her to tears which is a great moment. But that illustrates something else that I think is important. If you don't do art of some type, if you're not a musician or writer or painter or even a game designer or a stand-up comedian or any of those things, it's hard to realize just how important it is to the person doing it. How much of your self-worth becomes wrapped up in it. How much time and effort goes into doing creative work well. And just how little credit people actually get for it. And how difficult and confusing that can be. This is why it's important to me that I let people know the things I found which can help creative people understand the world around them and deal with that confusion and know what they actually need to do to be successful. For people to give so much of themselves and to suffer so much over such a long time, I mean this goes back centuries if not longer, and for people not to be able to succeed, for reasons in many cases that are not their fault, and for the existing ideas about it to lead them to believe that it is their fault and they're not good enough because, supposedly, making a great work of art will make you successful, that is an insane situation for people to be in. And to create that amount of misery in so many people, many of whom are so talented, I think in its own way is a crime against humanity. And so, if there's anything we can do to clear that up and make a better world, 
I think we should do it. And it's important. Anyway, that's it for that. And there is actually a whole other angle to this scene that I want to talk about too. But that is a totally different topic, which deals with some very specific parts of the way we think about these things. So we'll save that for later. And for now, thanks for your time.